Hello, welcome to the launch party of the John Thompson exhibition. And uh, we have a great buzz here, and you can see all the wonderful guests behind me. Uh, and we, I hope to be able to talk to a number of different people. Um, and I've just spotted Michael Wood. Hello, Michael. Hello, great to be here. <laughs> Right, Fabulous, yeah. isn't it? You're, you're too tall. I can't get you in. We have to move there back. We, we have to move back. Here we go. Yeah. Here we go. <laughs> so, Michael, what do you think of the exhibition so far? It's absolutely wonderful. I'm a big John Thompson fan. And, um, in fact, I saw the exhibition in Dublin about seven or eight years ago, and I've been in touch with Betty ever since. It's an incredible thing that Betty's done. And I find it so moving. I think the empathy that Thompson had for these cultures you know, they're not just observed by an, a, a colonial Westerner. They are the engagement with the people, and the, it, it, they're, they're magnificent pictures. There's a political edge to them as well. When you think about, you know, he's in China in the aftermath of the Taiping. Uh, 20 million people had died. Second Opium War. The British and the French had trashed the the, the Summer Palace. He records this, and uh, so his mind is very empathetic apart from being a brilliant craftsman, uh, there was something deeply philosophical in his work. A great artist, great artist. Fantastic. And so now you have travelled in China with your BBC crew and yeah, all that. Yeah. So from your experience, can you imagine what it was like for him, you know, 150 years ago with his paraphernalia? Well, he tells us, actually, you know, because, of course, <laughs> it, it, these wonderful photographs he put into book form. And uh, uh, some of those journeys, I mean, I think he... He's, he says he did about 3,000 miles up the Yangtze and its tributaries, and he's carrying camera gear, developing gear, the plates, and sometimes a great danger to his life. Uh, sometimes in the wild rural places, people were horrified by the idea of a camera and, and begged him to stop or drove him out of town. Um, so I think the sheer physical bravery of it is something. And there's a, there's a fabulous photograph in the exhibition of him in down in Fujian, He's still only about 34 or 5, but he looks like a man who's really lived already, you know. And he's going to leave China very soon after that photograph, after and 10 years in the East, and, and, and for good, you know. Yes, and, and that, that photo, will, I'll, I'll show you uh, a bit later, is the John Thompson selfie. Yeah, yeah, and it's with two Manchu soldiers. And he's slightly, you'll see it, slightly at an angle to the camera. Um, and there's a lot of subtext to that photo. <laughs> But the incredible thing is you can achieve this, which to my mind is the greatest photography in the 19th century. You know, he's one of the world's greatest photographers. But he lives for another 50 years and he comes back to Britain and he, he develops new techniques for publishing and for printing. He publishes books. His, his goal that photography should be instructive and open to everybody, he achieved in, in, in book form, you know, as well as becoming by appointment to Her Majesty Queen Victoria. <laughs> <laughs> An amazing man. Yeah, so, uh, do you have a message for our viewers? Well, come and see this exhibition and you're going to see one of the greatest photographers who has ever lived. Thank you, Michael Wood. Thanks a lot. So, you've heard it from the man himself, uh, expert on China, uh, travel journalist, historian, um, and also uh, he's made a BBC documentary all about China. We are upstairs here uh, in, the, in the Thai room, and I'm going to have a little wander around, and then downstairs we're going to have a look at the China exhibition. Uh, for those of you who have just joined us, this is the John Thompson exhibition launch party. I am Yang Mei Ui, the exhibition video blogger, um, and I am um, going to show you some of the photos which I hope you will come and see. Now, uh, behind me, uh, let's see if I can get this. Uh, yeah, here we are. We have a panorama of uh, Bangkok um, and <laughs> say hello. <laughs> um, and, uh, and, and underneath here, we have the modern um, panorama of, of Bangkok. And I'm sorry, I'm, I don't have a film crew. It's just me and my uh, ca uh, tripod and, ca um, and iPhone. So it's a little bit wibbly wobbly. Um, but so here we have the modern panorama of Bangkok. And here we have the photos taken by John Thompson at the time in 1860s when he traveled in Siam. And um, there's a more informative one here which points out all the different um, uh, main monuments uh, uh, in Bangkok. Uh, and so you must come and see this because the, 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 um, 
camera does not do this. My, my little phone does not do justice to, to, to the panorama. Um, and it's this huge wall uh, behind me. So let's have a little wander uh, around and see what else is here. Um, so uh, this is the main sort of section uh, as you enter and there's a panorama of um, uh, scenes from Thailand. Um, and here are some um, uh, photos of monks. Um, here we are. And try and grab some people here. Oops, hello. Would you like to say hello? Ooh. Hello, but not yet because yes. I've started chatting with people. Oh, and <laughs> that's all right. It's such a fun party that people haven't actually had a chance to look at the photos yet. And we've only just started, so I grabbed my guests rather prematurely. Uh, she looked a bit nervous. I'm so sorry about that. <laughs> um, so let's have a look here um, in this other room um, where we've got um, some uh, more decorative uh, objects to go with the exhibition. And what has been fantastic about this um, exhibition is that in addition to the photos, we have some of these rather lovely objects. Um, this is in, in, in the Thailand section, so we can see um, some of these uh, objects uh, here, um, which kind of give a bit more of a context to um, what's going on uh, in Thompson's photos. Um, and I'm sorry if it's a bit wibbly wobbly. I've only got a little tiny um, tripod, and I, I just love this um, this outfit, um, this Thai traditional costume, um, because what you can see uh, is the lovely fabric, um, and also the jewels uh, and so on 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 the um, on on the belt here, which uh, I find just really um, very very. Um, beautiful um, and in color of course um, because uh, when we when we see uh, and uh, some of these uh, photos they are in black and white um, here is a picture of the uh, prime minister's wife um, and you can see the fabric and the, um, uh, the, 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 the the sarong that she's wearing and I do apologize because I'm not a Thai expert so it may not be called the sarong so please don't shout at me um, and uh, this this uh, the wonderful carpet and, and chair and, and everything and and here is uh, the Prime Minister her, her husband um, uh, and uh, they are shown here as as, as a pair uh, I hope I hope you can see that um, and um, if, if if you can't then you'll have to come for your, come come yourself and and have a look at this exhibition yourself um, so hello um, have you been enjoying? Have you been enjoying the exhibition? I really enjoy looking at the photographs and artifacts. It's it's bringing some distant memories. And what do you mean by that? Um, there is some affinity to the people portrayed and to what it's man made, especially made by hand, because when people do things by hand, they express their heart and. Um, yes, the, the resonance with, with the, particularly with the dresses, what people wear, and the, the princes, the historical periods just unfold, and you could see it's it's real. It's it's not made up. It's it's how life was. Yes, I think this is the thing. When we look at some of these pictures, we think, oh, it's like a TV. It's like it's like a film. It's mm, not real, no. but actually, these are real people. No. I think one has to take one's time to really connect with that person because we go through dimensions and different time periods and you can look at the face and actually I, I stood by the young boy who was sitting there with this Thai boy. He had ordinary white shirt but unusual trousers and you, you have a connection. The face is speaking, the person is actually speaking to you should we allow for it. I really enjoy doing this because th this is real. It's not, well, paintings are also, uh, could be very unique, but uh, I, I think this is direct art. I Thank you very this. much. Thank you. Thank so you. I'm, I'm going to take the camera and I'm going to go and look at the, at the Thai boy that, that you mentioned. Oh, yes. yes. Please um. do. Please do. It's in the other uh, room just there. Very, very special. There's two of them. 
to, to paintings. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs> Okay, for those of you who have jo just joined us, this is the Facebook live stream uh, from the John Thompson launch party, um, uh, John Thompson exhibition launch party. And sorry, that was a little bit dark, um, uh, I, but I just have to grab whoever is there and who's happy to speak. So I am now going to go and find the uh, Thai boy uh, that, uh, um, that, that this lovely lady was, was just talking about. Um, and, and then we'll, we, we will see um, what, um, uh, what, 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 she was, what, what she meant about, about that, this very simple uh, young fellow. He's actually the, um, here we are, can we turn around and see him? There he is. Um, he is uh, on the front of the, uh, the, the exhibition flyer. Um, and then uh, there you can see him. I'm, I'm going to get out of the way. And there you can see him uh, with his white shirt. Um, and he's just, um, looks very modern, doesn't he? Um, uh, and, and I just love the, the eyes, the, the brightness in his eyes. Um, and you, as a writer, I wonder, you know, what is his story? Um, how, how did he grow up? What did he become? And what did he look like later on uh, in, in, in his old, older age? Um, but we won't know that. But we have, thanks to John Thompson, this wonderful image captured him in time. So... Sorry. Hello. Would you like to be on Facebook live stream? No. No. Okay. No, I've never, I haven't signed up for Facebook. Okay. All right. Don't mind. <laughs> so here, yeah, here we are. This is one of the challenges of doing a live stream, hoping to get people to speak to me, uh, but they just want to enjoy the exhibition, and that is absolutely fair enough. Um, why should why should they have me intrude? And, and shove my phone in their face. Um, but never mind, here we are. Uh, let's have a look at um, this wonderful barge picture. Um, and what I love about this is it's two photos um, put together. Oops, there goes my phone. Um, here we are. Two, two photos put together of this barge. Um, and I think what I love about John Thompson's photos is that they, he's captured a moment lost in time. It's no longer here. Um, yes? <laughs> That's all right. Um, and uh, uh, not, uh, the, all, these, all these people, all these things from the past, all the traditions, um, not entirely lost, um, uh, 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 but, uh, but generally fading away. Uh, and so it's wonderful to have this uh, captured on, uh, on, on, on film uh, in these wonderful big um, panoramas. Right, I am going to um, come, go downstairs now to the China section. Um, and um, let's see, I've got to find the stairs and try not to trip over uh, everybody. Uh, and so let's have a look. There's, there are even photos in the stairwell um, to make up the most of the space. And right, let's try not to fall down the stairs. Um, here we are. Uh, trying to. Uh, there's some photos here along the stairwell. Um, I'm just going to overtake these people and get out of their way. Um, and exhibition exhibition continues down the stairs. Um, and one of the things, one <laughs> of the challenges, um, is trying not to trip over myself um, to walk, walk and talk. Luckily, I can multitask. So the wonderful thing about um, John Thompson's photos is that he has taken uh, these photos. Um, I don't know. I hope you can see this um, camera. Um, this is a camera loaned to us by Barbara Harding. Um, and it's uh, not exactly from the time of John Thompson, but from around the 1890s, I believe. I hope you can see that. Let's have a look. Um, and the thing about this uh, camera is that it is uh, the, uh, even more modern, uh, more up to date and, uh, than, than John Thompson's actual camera. And as you can see, it was a portable camera uh, because it's, you can concertina it um, to make it small. And you can see the uh, brass clips here where um, you would um, clip it together, bring it together, and, and it made it portable. Um, and so he, for him, um, he used that camera, whereas for me, I'm doing this on my um, iPhone. And so, you know, 150 years, and we've got this um, different technology. But this wonderful thing is that he captured all those photos uh, of Thailand upstairs that we saw. 
and China, as we're about to see, with something like this. And um, you will be able to see, and, and I'm just going to show you in a minute, I'm just going to finish talking here first. Um, there's a film, uh, a, a short documentary film, uh, as part of the exhibition, uh, about the wet collodion process. And that involved using glass plates that would slot into uh, the camera, the back of the camera here, um, and um, they would go in and uh, he would take the picture and it would be on a tripod um, and um, he would then have to develop those negatives uh, using those glass plates um, there and then. So um, for us now, snap, snap, up it goes onto Instagram or Facebook or wherever. But for him, he had to carry a tent with all his different chemicals that he would mix around, mix, uh, and, and all the glass plates that he would carry that were uh, blank, that would be put, be put in, then they would have the negative on, on, on it and he'd have to develop it and carry those all the way back to um, uh, to a port, which would then uh, you would then take a sailing ship all the way back to the UK, and so it is fantastically, remarkably amazing that these photos uh, are here today. They've survived those perilous journeys um, uh, and uh, uh, made of glass uh, and were not broken. Uh, and, and because they were so big, we, the exhibition is able to project, uh, not project, um, print these photos in such a huge, huge scale. Um, so just to take you across here to the uh, documentary, uh, as you can see, as you come down the stairs, don't miss it. Just turn over and um, there's a little nice little cubby, cubby hole um, nook here where you can learn all about the wet collodion process that John Thompson used. So now we are heading back to the main exhibition uh, and uh, just saying hello to people. Uh, and here we are in the China section. And as we enter the China section, the first thing you see is this wonderful, wonderful room. It's my favorite room. It's the room of the women. It's the wi Chinese women's photos. Um, and um, the, the, the great thing uh, about this exhibition is that there's this separate room that is a special chamber for the women. Um, and uh, I, I just love it because um, to me, um, in, in my research uh, for my show, Bound Feet Blues, I learned all about women with bound feet and women in, in China in the mid-Victorian period. And they uh, had bound feet. They were meant to be virtuous and kept away from the world. And so they were sequestered in an inner chamber uh, within the courtyard, within the household. And so I love the fact that this exhibition has this special room for the um, uh, for, for the women, uh, and and it sort of kind of echoes that sense of the sequestering away of, of the women. Now I'm going to take you in. Uh, when we did the behind the scenes, they were not uh, really uh, ready yet, um, uh, and so it is just wonderful now to see. Um, this room full of the photos in this gorgeous, gorgeous uh, blue. And in front of us here, let's see if I can uh, focus the camera here, uh, is this um, uh, wonderful garment, which is a, a, a textile, a gown, um, that is like one uh, of the, uh, the gowns worn by the women in these photos. Um, and you can see it um, all the way around. Um, and I think it's just absolutely gorgeous. And here, here is another one. Um, I've just got in, in the way of somebody. <laughs> um, and um, here is the, the other one. Um, and it's just wonderful to have them displayed like this. And you can see, uh, I don't know if you can see, the, the, the back of the one that, that I just showed you just there. Um, and here is a, a wonderful uh, woman in, a, in, in the doorway. Um, and just looking all around. So, I mean, you have to come and just get the full um, feeling of this uh, wonderful space. And it's just, I don't know, the blue, the deep blue, it's, it's very, very sumptuous. And there's a, there's a sense of kind of um, calm uh, and voluptuous, not, not quite voluptuous, I mean, um, luxurious. Yeah, more that. Um, so uh, you must come and, and see this room and feel this room for, for, for yourself. Um, moving on, let's see who, wh what else I can show you. Um, 
Oh, this wonderful, wonderful Cantonese woman. Um, someone there taking a picture of it. Um, and it's just gorgeous. So I'm going to see who else is willing to talk to me um, and who sh shove me away for uh, interrupting their conversations. Um, and oh, and I have found Betty, Betty Yao, the co-curator, <laughs> and I'm dragging her away. <laughs> Oh, he's, he said something already. I, I grabbed him. I grabbed him already. We've got Australian visitors arriving. Oh, hang on. Hang on. I found, I found a writer who's going to talk to me. I found a writer. Who's to, yeah, 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 yeah. These two handsome gentlemen are going to talk to me. There's the camera. Say hello to... to, to. Okay, so who are you? You know. You know who I am. You are Michael Freeman. That's Freeman. good. Very I'm good. Sorry. Very I'm good. So sorry. Okay. <laughs> now I'm, I'm Michael Freeman. Um, I'm a photographer, uh, almost as old as you can see, as John Thompson, but still living. Um, and uh, I'm here because, uh, apart from the fact that it's a, a wonderful exhibition of one of the pioneering photographers, I, 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 I almost said travel photographer, but that's rather a demeaning. Uh, term these days. But why do you say demeaning? Because you're a travel photographer, aren't you? No, I, I travel to photograph. Ah, okay. Which There's is a, a distinction. Which, which, which <laughs> sounds it, 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 yes, it sounds a little bit of a strange distinction. But well, I think these days travel is uh, is not only common; it's expected. I think most people believe it's a right to be able to travel to just about anywhere. So. The places we see here um, in 150 years ago now are certainly not exotic in the same sense. And, and Thompson was, he was reporting uh, another world to an audience who would never or never expect to visit themselves. So that's a very different dynamic between uh, the photographer and the uh, and, and his audience than now. Photography has changed totally in that respect in that we're all photographers um, so we, we look at each other's pictures in very different ways uh, but Thompson here was, was, was performing an educational service and in the 19th century in Victorian Britain the idea of education and instruction uh, was accepted across the social scale as being uh, basically a good thing and, and, and a lot of effort and uh, an investment was put in to that that's why we have all these libraries today and, and yes in a like way that. the Victorians were, were really um, d did a lot of social good and were very had this idea that they had to educate people yes um, yes quite right uh, the, the other thing of course is that uh, photography these days is, is quite often performed with, <laughs> with this amazing device and it's very good but um, while I'm uh, a fully paid up subscriber of, of modern technology it, it does and, and the advantage is that, that in, in principle, in theory the, the fact that you can take a picture easily frees, frees you up to think about higher things or more interesting or aesthetic things uh, the reality is that, that most people just sort of take a picture and mentally throw it away uh, whereas here this was a real operation uh, I mean, these are glass plates the, the, the taking an exposure making a picture was a big planned event each time and, and also uncertain you know you take a picture these days and well you look at it to see how it looks and if you made a mistake you take it again it wasn't like that they don't he didn't even have Polaroids because in, in should we say going back 30 years then uh, professional photographers using large format cameras they would use Polaroids just to prove that they got the exposure right or the framing right 
anyway, apart from that, it's a magnificent exhibition and opened my eyes a lot to uh, to an era in which there's a lot of adventure in this. The adventure of entering a society that wasn't immediately open and not necessarily welcoming. Uh, there were no travel agencies. Uh, Great, Michael, thank you. That was really, really informative in terms of a quick gallop across the whole spectrum of the history of, of photography. And thank you very much. My pleasure. Thank you. Wow, that was really uh, interesting. And now I'm going to try and grab Betty. Michael Pritchard. Oh, hello, Michael, then. hello. hello. <laughs> and you are the Royal Photographic Society. Yeah. Gosh, yeah. I'm, I'm, we're very. Oops, you're, you're uh, another tall person. Here we are. Thank you very much. Um, what would you like to say to our Facebook audience? Um, I just would like to say, if you get the opportunity to come to see this exhibition, do come here because you won't see a better exhibition of Chinese and East Asian photography in London at this point in time. It's phenomenal. I'm really bowled over by the exhibition, really stunned by it, really. Thank you very much. And this is somebody from the Royal Photographic Society. Wow. Yep. So I'm chief executive of the Royal Photographic Society and I'm also a photo historian. And I think to me as a historian, you know, what you see by looking at these pictures is very much a, a, a window into a whole different area. And when you understand how John Thompson was working with photography and the types of processes and the technical challenges he had to deal with, then you, you can start to appreciate just what an achievement he he's he's a chip made by producing these photographs you know from Hong Kong and the stereo photograph we're looking at the moment you know he was not just doing s single images but also stereo pairs so that he could be s produce those in three dimensions for people to look at so it's a remarkable achievement and he's, he really stands out as being a, a pioneer of travel photography but also a pioneer of photography in, in other ways as well Great, thank you very much. Now I'm going to turn the camera <laughs> so that we can see the stereo picture. And would you like just to, just to talk us through a little bit about this picture? So what we've got here are what's called a stereo pair. So they're two very slightly different photographs. So we've got one here, one taken either at the same time or in a slightly different position. And then when you combine those together through a stereoscope and look at them, you'll get an impression of three dimensions. Oh, wow, 3D in the Victorian age. It is, and 3D's got such a long history. And, you know, we think we're there doing all these wonderful things with 3D IMAX and everything. But actually, John Thompson was doing it back in the 1870s. And and 3D even predates John Thompson. It goes right the way back to the 1840s. But, you know, for the Victorians to see these far-flung places in three dimensions, yeah, it must have been an absolute revelation. And every sort of well-to-do home had a, a parlour with a stereoscope in it and a box of stereo cards so that they could actually explore the world and get a real sense of what was beyond their, their doorstep or what was beyond London or the United Kingdom. How amazing! So it was like their kind of, their equivalent of the Game Boy or, or whatever, uh, the, the modern technology. Very much so. I mean, the stereoscopy you know, came and went a few times through the 19th century and into the 20th, but you know, for those people that saw it, it was both an education and an entertainment. And I think that's where photography, as we heard from Lord Putnam, is able to do. You know, it's something that photography can do almost uniquely. Perhaps film does as well to some extent, but it can combine both of that. And if you add the, the 3D side of it, then you've got something really special and a completely different way of seeing the world. And I think that's what makes photography and stereoscopy particularly exciting and interesting thank you very much michael enjoy the rest of the exhibition wow that was great it's just so fantastic to to grab all the different people and get their different perspectives um uh, and uh where's betty oh hello Hello. Hi. Hi. We're gonna, apparently, we're going to talk about this. Picture. Okay. All right. <laughs> I'm going to shoo some people out of the way. <laughs> Hang on. Uh, I've got to position the camera. Um, uh, hold on. Here we go. Um, hello. Right. Tell me who you. Who are you? Yes, I am Helen Person, and I'm a specialist on shoes. Oh, oh a shoe lady. <laughs> Fantastic. <Yes. laughs> so I made this exhibition on. Um, shoes for the V&A a few years ago which is now touring in the V&A and this 
photo is actually in the exhibition to kind of show the way how shoes can express um, status, identity, um, power. In particular among men, this is what you had to wear, is these kind of boots. Right, I'm going to see oh. if I can bring the camera yeah. uh, closer mm. and just hope for the best. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so these boots here, well called mandarin boots, you have an upper of really shiny black um, satin silk. And then you have the sole is built up by layers and layers and layers of hemp, which is then painted really thick. So it becomes really sturdy, really, really kind of compact. The more important men, the, the heels were about 70, 70 to 10 centimeters. But the thing was, you couldn't bend the sole. So you have to lift your knees if you were walking. But it was more a sign that you wouldn't, you wouldn't walk. You would be carried around in these kind of boots. And they were really expensive. So it would cost um, a salary, a year's salary, for a man to buy these kind of boots. That is just so fascinating because, um, as I've been telling my, my, my audience here, that um, I did a show called Bound Feet Blues, oh, all yeah. about bound feet. Yes. Um, oh. And because my great grandmother had, had bound yeah. feet, and we went to your VA exhibition oh, and yeah. we saw the little bound feet oh, shoes, yes. and it was just like mind blowing because, of course, the women had a completely different thing. And so it's fascinating for me to hear about the men's shoes yes. because, of the, because the women was all about being being little yeah little little yeah. <laughs> it's this kind of the same idea if you can't walk in your shoes you must be very important because if you can't walk you can't work someone else is doing that for you so you must be very important very rich and it was the same for men and women so it is really an important kind of accessory to your wealth Wow, and, and the thing is, what was interesting for me, uh, I wish I'd known this when I was doing my show, was because we were practicing, uh, because it was a theatre show, I was trying to work out how to walk yeah. with bound feet. Ah. And so but it was interesting what you say about the shoes for the men, that they had to work, take big steps, so it made them more manly. Exactly, and women had to take smaller steps. Um, I was given a pair of um, horse hoof shoes, so the man's shoe, women's shoes, with quite a, you know, with where you have the heel exactly under your feet and you just have to find your your center of gravity but it is the kind of same you have to walk in a very cautious way and showing off your your clothes because you, you your dress was swishing yeah. and yeah it would so it's all a language and you're just telling everyone look at me I got money because I can't walk very fast or someone actually is carrying me around when some of these ladies with the man's shoe horse hoof shoes you had a maid with you so you could lean on her in case it became a bit difficult so it's all about 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 status, status. Yeah. fantastic yeah. thank you so much thank so you. informative thank, thank you, thank you. Thank All right. enjoy the rest of the expression thank you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. wow 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 i'm mind blown um and i i guess i i i, I wish i'd spoken to her for my bound feet blues because then i could have uh, incorporated men's shoes in the, in the, into the show perhaps um but you have to come and look at this uh, 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 uh um uh, photo um <laughs> to look at this photo for yourself um, and also when you look at this uh, and you contrast it with with the, the with, with the women with their tiny feet you can really really see it and because the pictures are so big um, you really um, get a feel for it and hello somebody somebody's popped in it's Barbara hi <laughs> but look at Pedder Street and um, this is Hong Kong yes and interestingly, it, when, I was, when I was a tiny, tiny little girl um, in Hong Kong, there was still the remnants of this. Ha! Here's the peak. Um, so, and some of these buildings were still in Hong Kong in the 1950s. And this wonderful, I mean, historically, it's so interesting. But you've got these sedan chairs, 
and they they stopped in Hong Kong in 1951, I think. Gosh, the dancers only stopped in 1951. Yes, because I have a tiny memory of the sedan chair in Hong Kong. But you could have a sedan chair in uh, Lantau Island right until the early 60s. Oh, gosh. Yes. Oh, wow. So, so now you, you, you lent us the camera, didn't yes. you? Yes. Can you tell us a bit about the camera? Well, it would be a very modern camera for John Thompson, wouldn't it? <laughs> um, it it's 20 years younger than the Thompson camera, but he carried a couple of those cameras and even bigger ones. And he would have had to have all the chemicals that went with it. And he had 30 porters to go through the jungles to Cambodia. I can't imagine how much trouble he must have had in China taking photos because he was really off the beaten track. Yes, compared to now, where we can just sort of go up in our, our, our travel our coach or, 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 or jeep or whatever. And um, when he was in China, he got access into private homes, or one particular one. So he, he had photos of Chinese ladies in, at home. Very private photos, marvelous. And just amazing how he managed to to um, to uh, to be respectful to them while also taking their photograph and kind of winning their trust, really. Exactly. I think Thompson was really the first photographer who had enormous respect for women, and you can see that. There's three photos there of Chinese women: uh, a very young girl, an older woman, and. It's very respectful, and it gives you a lot of information. Yeah, great, Barbara. Thank you so much. Right. Where would you like to say something? Go somewhere you like. I want to some wander somewhere. You know. Okay, who's who's Peter? Who's Peter? Oh, Peter York. Oh, Peter York. Of course, you're Peter York. Yeah. Very good. Thank you. <laughs> well, you have to get out of the way. I can't see myself. You have to get out of the way. There we are. How, how's that? Is that? Have we got you and the men? We've got you and the men. Good. All right. Now you're you're quite naturally dressed. This is my impersonation of Jacob Rees-Mogg. <laughs> it's the Jacob Rees-Mogg look. <laughs> and why not? because I was wearing double-breasted suits long before him. <laughs> so there you go. Now then, why do you like this picture? I think it's a lot. You go, you're transferred back in time, aren't you? It's, these pictures are amazing. They're absolutely amazing. And they feel very unposed. Very unposed. I hate the word authentic. In fact, I've written a book explaining why I hate the word authentic, but they're, they're for real. They are so for real, and you try to transfer your... It's really a challenge. You try to transfer yourself into that gaze, that mid-19th century gaze, on these astonishing and, and wonderful things these people, the clothes, the buildings, the fan fantastic buildings. I think this is a, 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 an incredibly wonderful exhibition. Thank you. And would you say that there's anything that pops out, any memorable photo apart from these chaps, anything for somebody who's just watching this and think, well, shall I come or not? Uh, the amazing thing is they're all memorable. And I have to say, I'm very, very privileged. I've got the book. And so I've been looking at it. Huh? And I've got it by my bed. And I, you know, it's, it's my bedside reading. Fantastic. So bedside reading. And come to the exhibition because it's free. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you, Peter. Right. Uh, that all right. That's perfect. Perfect. Um, good. Here, let's have a look at this photo properly. 
um, of the of the gentlemen um, uh, with their big shoes, uh, as as Helen said, and their very uh, natty outfits uh, that Peter was telling us about. <laughs> it was just such a hoot! What a hoot! Um, and um, right, I'm, I keep trying to get. I, oh, here I am. I keep trying to get Betty to talk to me, uh, but she keeps putting me off to other people. So. Betty, will you say something? Uh, let's get Alfie. While okay, all right. So you see, this is what happens. <laughs> okay, Yang Mei, Alf wants, this is Alfie Tong. Hello, Alfie. Hello, hello, hello. Hi, hello. 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 hi. 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 And he's picked this one because he's a Cantonese boy. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. Right. Cantonese boy. Oh, he's a Cantonese boy. <laughs> okay, right. right let's, okay. See, let's see if we can yeah. set up the camera. It's all live, so right, it's, okay. it's yeah, all yeah, yeah, yeah. completely oh, chaotic. Yeah, yeah. Right. Uh, let's see. Where can we put you? Um, there. Uh, how's, how's that? If you stand to one side, can we see you? No, no. In in, in the picture as well. Oh, in the picture. No, 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 no. That, there, there. Here we go. You, you and the Cantonese boy. Here we go. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> right. Alfie Tom. Hello. Hello. So sorry about that. I had to rearrange you. No, no, no. It's fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're from GQ. No, I'm not. I'm just freelance. So I'm a freelance journalist. Freelance. Oh, no. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. I, so I, including GQ, including and, GQ. and Mr. Porter so, and the audience. Right. Yeah. Okay. So, I'm not on staff. I'm not on staff. Right. So, from your perspective, what what do you love about this picture? Oh uh, well, it's just very intimate, you know, because the equipment um, was very cumbersome back then, and it would have taken a lot to capture an image like this. So he must have really gained the trust of um, the people that he was photographing. And I suppose um, I just went back to Hong because I grew up in London. And so to be able to see so vividly what, you know, this was, would have been the milieu that my, that my grandfather, well, my great grandparents would have been, would have been part of. Uh, so it's very, very evocative and uh, very, very interesting as a Chinese person from Britain, just to kind of be able to really see close up what, um, what life would have looked like and, you know, get a, get a feeling and a, for it. Because they're very, they're very lively, very evocative. And very vivid images, aren't they? Uh, th there's something sort of quite cheeky about this boy, I think. Yeah, he looks quite naughty, doesn't he? You know, what, what's his... Um, he's got a quite naughty, sort of petulant... He'd be quite petulant look about him. Um, and I, I feel that um, he's sort of been shoved in front of the camera. Here, hold, hold your school books. He's done all right. He's done all right. He's done all right. He's done, yeah, uh, he doesn't look like the kind of boy that likes his books that much, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, it's great. And this is what my grandfather would have worn when he was young, because uh, my grandfather's a hundred years old. Oh wow! So he would have known people, like that and, it, and it, you know, it's, and obviously, so often you are our sort of experience of these kinds of images is, is you know, in, in popular culture, in kung fu films, in a, in a, you know, Hong Kong movies or whatever. So to see it in a slightly different context, in a documentary style, where he's really gone to try and capture the reality. The, the reality. So is, is, is your grandfather still alive? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He is. Wow, wow. And he's from, he's from Gansai, which is in the, the southernmost part, part of China, which is where, you know, Canton is. But I'm not sure if it's in the Canton region, but it, very close to, to here, so... And this is probably what my granddad would have looked like. Gosh, yeah. yes. And, and, and do you have any stories from your granddad about his childhood? Has he told any? Oh, well, we were um, we were kind of... Um, we were, I think we had a bit of land, uh, but, it, but we were very... Um, we weren't involved in trade or government or anything like that. We, granddad said we were quite scholarly people. We were interested in poetry and um, he had a very privileged uh, upbringing. Uh, his schooling to go and fight against the Japanese after the rape of uh, Nan Nanjing. So he had a very turbulent youth. Um, so ama amazing opportunity for uh, someone like Alfie Tong, uh, and, and I guess also for me and, and the Chinese um, diaspora to come to this uh, and, 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 and see some of our heritage. But, but also, I guess, for people who are not Chinese, it's interesting as well. Yes, quite, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, I suppose uh, China is a very sort of abstract uh, concept for lots of people in, in Britain. And in fact, I tend to find that most people are only really interested in the Chinese uh, in terms of food, and then after food, money. 
So, um, so really, just to have this more intimate um, portrayal of us, uh, more human portrayal of us. Yeah, so that's, that's a really good point, that sort of um, opening up the history and heritage of, of China and, and the Chinese people uh, as people. and, we and people, not yeah, we're more than just sort of, uh, you know, uh, big finance and, uh, and uh, the guys, you know, you go and have your dinner with. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I guess this is what, what is so wonderful about these pictures. It's kind of, you're, you're, these captures, the pictures capture these individuals. You might, you know, uh, you might say, Oh, it's it's a, a, a pic, uh, It's an exhibition about China and the Chinese, but actually it's They're very warm and human. Actually, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And, and it's, it's so. actually it's, it's individuals. Yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah. And you get they're very they're very intimate. You know, obviously he spent a long time there to get to know the people, and I think because most I think for the best photography is where there's like a nice relationship between the um, the subjects and the photographer, and there's obviously a lot of uh, permission has been granted. So. Alfie Tom, thank you very much. <laughs> Well, again, a, a, another perspective. Um, now, um, I think uh, I'm probably going to sign off very soon. Um, this is the famous photo of John Thompson, um, his, uh, the, uh, what we think is possibly the first selfie. Um, and this was the photo that Michael Wood spoke about at the very beginning of this live stream, uh, where John Thompson is um, uh, standing there in front of these two Manchu so soldiers. And he's, I don't know, whether he's looking a little bit worried, uh, trying to take his selfie, whether he's thinking, oh, am I in the picture? Um, or, oh, uh, is it a bit, I'm feeling a bit nervous with these Manchu soldiers behind me. But this is the famous John Thompson selfie. So, um, Betty is hovering. Hello, hello. Yes, here we are. We, we suspect this might be the first selfie, we don't know. <laughs> Although he was focusing mainly on the Manchus. Come and stand on this side. Yes. Uh, so we see, we see John yeah. Thompson there. No, no, so you're, you're in the, in yeah, the frame. Yeah. There okay, we are. Okay. Good. Um, so Betty, what a successful evening. Oh, thank you. It's been so great. So many people came to support it. And what's fascinating this evening is that we have such a cross mix of people from the photography world, from the auction world, from the Chinese cultural art world and also from the Thai culture and art world. So, so it's, a, it's been a fun party because it's, it's, it's very much a, an eclectic mix of, of guests that I thought, well, people just um, have a fun chat together. Yeah, and Tom, John Thompson bringing everyone together. <laughs> Fantastic. And I'm going to come in here yeah. so that... It, um, but I'm blocking him now. Anyway, okay, we'll, 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 work, we'll work something out. Yeah, yeah. Um, so um, you know John Thompson's work intimately now for the last five years of your life? Mm, it's been going on for over ten years. <laughs> However, every time I do an exhibition, I find something new. It's always something new. Because the um, using 21st century technology, the prints are so large that there's so a lot of detail there that you wouldn't actually just get by looking at a book or anything like that. So if you look very, very carefully, I found things that could be, you know, a cat under a bench or some very interesting plant that I've noticed, a bonsai or something, that you've just not paid attention to. So there's real depth in the work and that is still I feel you know relates well to today um, the public coming in all sorts of background and they'll pick up something different and the wonderful thing is it's a free exhibition so you can keep coming back you can come for five minutes you can come for an hour and keep coming back um, and it runs through to it opens tomorrow the 13th of April and runs through to the 23rd of June at the Brunei Gallery so make sure you put a date in your diary to come at some point Cheers. See you there. <laughs> Thank you very much, Betty. Okay, I think that's a really good note to end on. I'm going to try and get out of his way uh, as I turn the camera off. Thank you very much for watching the Facebook live stream. Thank you. Oh, are, are there more people? Oh, there are more people. There are more people. Fantastic. Ah. In front of that. Okay, okay, okay. Okay, there's more people who want to share their passion for John Thompson. All right. So we are wandering through the China Gallery. Very quick whiz through. Hope I'm not making you seasick. Then we have Richard Hatch reading from Sotheby's. Okay. And we're standing in front. Oh, well, hold on, hold on. Actual, we're standing in front of an actual John Thompson volume. Chinese people. So uh, Richard will know all about it. So. 
So, Richard, I'm shoving the camera. The spot suddenly. <laughs> hello. Okay, hello. Um, I have got you. Are you there? Yes. Yes, so good. All right. Uh, can you tell us who you are? My name is Richard Fasherini. I'm a senior director and specialist at Sotheby's in books and manuscripts and also travel photography. Fantastic. And can you tell us about this book? Well, this is a first edition of John Thompson's four-volume work, Illustrations of China and Its People. It's an extraordinary book documenting both the landscapes and portraits all over China where Thompson travelled, uh, from Beijing and Fuchao and elsewhere. And he's reproduced with collar-type illustrations. It's a photomechanical process to use these images. What I'm excited about in this particular exhibition is that we have enlargements of Thompson's photographs from the original negatives. So much, much larger than you'd ever normally see. As you see reproduced in this book, they're a fraction of the size, the same Ill- images that we see on the walls around us here. So there are details that I've never seen before in Thompson's photographs. I'm seeing for the very first time the details in the clothing and in the landscape and in the architecture and I think this is what makes this exhibition so exciting for me. Great, thank you very much. You're most welcome. Thank you. Thank you. So this is an amazing thing, isn't it? That um, we have John Thompson's uh, book because uh, uh, he would come back from his travels, um, like many photographers today, um, and he would publish a book, uh, and uh, that was 150 years ago. And here. Uh, we have, uh, let's see if I can get it in the case again, um, here is uh, the, the, the book, but actually um, what Sotheby's have, sa- have said is that even for them, it's, this exhibition is, is amazing and new and fresh because they can actually, you can actually see the large scale um, photos and all the detail. So um, I think I'm running out of uh, people to talk to now that, uh, that, that, I, um, I've, uh, that, that was my last guest um, and they will be closing the gallery soon um, so thank you everybody for who, who's been watching live I do apologize for some of the wibbly wobbliness and the funny camera angles uh, because it's only me uh, uh, with my with my iPhone and uh, a, a microphone uh, and uh, no film crew no lighting and so on so um, uh, I think it gives you a flavor of, of the exhibition so the main thing is um, forget about me forget about the video just come just come you will be amazed and you will just love these photos um, and so uh, to find out more it's johnthompsonexhibition.org and it runs from the 13th of April through to the 23rd of June 2018 um, it's free uh, it's at the Brunei Gallery if you go to the website johnthompsonexhibition.org there's all the information about uh, how to get here there's also information about the talks uh, that uh, are related to the exhibition Michael Wood uh, whom I spoke to at the very beginning of this uh, live stream uh, will be uh, giving a talk as well as Richard Ovenden um, and there's also a talk at the Royal Photographic Society the Royal Geographic Society and a lot more coming up. If you click through on the website johnthompsonexhibition.org and click through to the blog, there'll be uh, video interviews, more formal video interviews with Betty, with Barbara uh, um, Harding, uh, that's going to be coming up. Lupt Utama, who is um, uh, a Hollywood uh, Emmy Award winning uh, costume designer, I had the great uh, privilege to interview him. Um, Also Katrina Hazel, who's an independent curator, Uh, we've got an interview with her. And also all kinds of articles and features all about John Thompson. Um, But most of all, come. Just come. Um, and uh, Betty will be around, I'm sure, for some of the day. So if you happen to be here and you see her, you'll recognize her, come and say hello. Um, and so this is me, Yang Mei Ui, the video blogger for the John Thompson exhibition, signing off. Bye-bye.